The official 2012 hurricane season is over and an unusual, bizarre and destructive season that it was. I'm here with Dr. Greg Postel and Michael Lowry, hurricane specialist. Let's talk about the season and why this was strange and what your takeaways were. But first of all, here's the wrap up. We had 19 storms that deserved a name that made it to tropical storm status. Compare that to 11 average since satellite coverage began in 1966. 10 of them made it to hurricane status. Six would be the normal average and we had one category three and above storm that's uh, compared to two that we would normally have. So two out of 11 versus one out of 19. One of the things very, very unusual. Now, Greg, what was your takeaway from this unusual season? Well, one of the most peculiar aspects of the entire season was that we had no hurricanes form inside the main development region in the tropical Atlantic. Each one of these yellow lines is a map of the individual name storms and those red swirlies there, those are the hurricane formation points. None of them formed inside of this area in the tropical Atlantic called the main development region, which we really normally see them develop. And also note that a lot of these tracks move out to sea. Very few of them cross land in the United States. Now, some of the reasons for this are one of them here. We have frequent dips in the jet stream throughout the hurricane season. That helps steer the storms out to sea. We did have four landfalls, but most of them were out to sea. Some of the other reasons for no development in the main development region were that it was drier than average overall across much of the region, and that tend to, tends to hinder development. And one of the other obstacles in the way of formation in the tropical Atlantic is that we had numerous upper level lows across the region and that brought a lot of high altitude winds and also some dry air into again regions where we normally see development take place. One thing we'll remember about 2012 are these large and lumbering hurricanes and one thing that we all know is that big storms always inevitably have big impacts but I want to start first with the small storm if you look at a small hurricane you can think of it like standing in a pool of water and then trying to use your finger to push water around you have a small wind field and because of that you're only able to push a limited amount of water toward the shore but if you were to expand the winds the wind field just the size of the storm doing nothing to the intensity you're, you're pushing more water toward the shore which is increasing the surge and also increasing the amount of coastline that's being effective. Now these large storms like the Sandys and the Isaacs, instead of using your finger, you're now using your entire arm to sweep water toward the shore. And it's really the breath of the winds, Brian, that's causing the destructive storm surge that we saw this year. So essentially the storm is putting more energy in the water because it's blowing air over a large area. You know, when Isaac came along, we talked about this. We talked about how big the storm was and how much water it was going to push. And then Sandy came along and it was so dramatically much bigger. So we need to, to do something here to get fewer folks surprised that this is going to happen. And the National Hurricane Center is actually taking some action. And Dr. Rick Nab, our friend there, the director of the Hurricane Center, of course, said this this year to Reuters. We've been working toward a new storm surge warning for a few years now. And Debbie, Isaac and Sandy showed us how much we really need to hit the accelerator on getting that storm surge warning out the door. And as far as communications, were you surprised at in the Northeast that we didn't have better messaging, that more people weren't ready for Sandy? Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't have better messaging and a better response from the general public too about the threats that were raised. So yeah, yeah all in all. Yeah, a lot of lessons from the hurricane season of 2012. And remember, storms can form in any month of the year.